when you're on a journey and the end seems farther and farther away, you realize the end is the journey. Hello, my name is Arthur Kraus. As a professional photographer for over 30 years, I've been incredibly lucky to travel around the world, shooting many images and sharing many experiences. And today I'd like to share some of those experiences with you. So, go with me on a journey to Mexico where we're going to explore some of the great ceremonial sites, some of the great mystery and magic of Mexico. I really had no expectations, and I surely wasn't trying to make a film about UFOs. But they kept coming up in conversation. I have uh, an experience of seeing three times uh, UFOs. I also have seen UFOs twice in my life. From Mexico, not from here, but I believe in those, those things. Their movements are very fast. Uh, up and down and uh, back and forward and um, suddenly they disappear. Um, what else can I say? What was the date of the last one? Uh, about uh, two months ago. And I was with my family and my father and all my, my friends had to, to see that. Uh, in the first occasion, uh, the passengers, even they saw it. As soon as I landed in Mexico, I began to feel a certain energy that was different from anywhere I had ever been. Welcome to Mexico. <laughs> Hi, Arthur Krause here at the Pyramids of Teotihuacan, one of the most majestic sites in all of North America. Teotihuacan is the second largest pyramid by volume in the world. Unlike the ones in Egypt, at Giza, the pyramids at Teotihuacan are shrouded in mystery. <laughs> three ceremonial centers in our culture very near Mexico City that makes a triangle, a triangle of energy. Those towns and ceremonial centers are called Xochicalco, Tepoztlan, and Malinalco. Having listened to my new friend Guillermo, intrigued me very much into this triangle of energy in Mexico. So I packed up and went to Tepoztlan. Tepoztlan is an amazing community. Tepoztlan, meaning the place of copper, is among the lush slopes of the Sierra de la Jusco. High above the town, the Tepozteco, 
guards over the city. But some say it does more than that. It attracts aliens. Se ven las luces en aquel cerro, en la punta del cerro de la luz. Este se vio como atravesó una luz enorme. Y pues ya en la cámara, viéndolo detalladamente, sí se define el platillo volador. Es el observe a huge light coming over the mountain, over the people's stick. And through the appreciation of the camera, you could tell that it was an identified flying object. You must be really intrigued by this information to climb the Teposteco because it takes several hours and it's rather treacherous. As you can see here, someone didn't make it. The historical record states that during Montezuma's reign, the Aztecs conquered several cities. Among them was Teposlan. It's amazing to think that people lived here hundreds and hundreds of years ago. But how did they get here? And how did they build these pyramids? This pyramid is incredibly well designed, but it's very high up. And how did they get the stones here? I'm sitting on the edge of the pyramid. When I finally did reach the top of the Tepos Teco and I stood at the apex of the pyramid, something very strange occurred. When I photographed this scene, the sound was perfect. But then, when I played it back, I couldn't understand myself. I tried several times, but this is how it came out. Climb up about 5,000 feet. Whew. What a majestic sight that was. Teposlan's secluded location was perfect for Emiliano Zapata. Around 1910, he used this as one of his strongholds. Después, en el cerro que se llama Sematsi, o Cerro de la Manita, se han visto muchos objetos y existen muchas fotos de, de esos objetos. Este, como una plática, en una ocasión, no sé si ustedes se enteraron de un problema que había de club de golf. Sobre la construcción del club de golf en Teposclán. Entonces la gente estaba en el meeting. La gente se encontraba reunida en el centro y era como a las 7 de la noche cuando pasó la, la enorme bola de fuego.